Afghanistan's actual last Jew flees the country. Um, Zambulon Samatov was internationally known for years as the only remaining Jewish person in Afghanistan. After refusing to leave the country for decades, he was forced to leave in late September. The Associated Press reported that Simatov's cl famed claim as the last Jew in Afghanistan might not have been what it seemed. 83-year-old Tova Moradi, Simatov's distant cousin, was technically the last Jew in Afghanistan. The Associated Press reported that Moradi left Afghanistan in the third week of October, weeks after Simatov's departure. Moradi was, ha, has an interesting background. She was married to a Muslim at the age of 16 after running away from her family, but never converted and continued to observe Jewish practice. Isra Aid, a non-governmental humanitarian organization based in Israel, helped Moradi and her descendants escape from Afghanistan. So I, we can talk about the stories. And then I also have other updates on Simatov who, if you remember, we had a huge laugh last time we talked about him um, because he's quite the character. So, so, yeah, so people who don't know, we thought the last Jew in Afghanistan was Simatov, mm -hmm. and he left, right? Mm -hmm. But now we realize, no, there was another person that was actually the last Jew. Who's this? Who's, who is this again? A, basically you know? a distant cousin of that first guy. She's, she's 83 very... years old. And she became mm -hmm. distant from What's her family mean? because when, like I said, um, it sounds like she needed to run away from her family. It's not exactly clear what was happening there, but to run away Hold from on. her family, she ended up marrying this Muslim guy and she went away. And then she lost contact with her family for basically 60 years. So it makes right. sense that he was claiming that he was the last Jew because she was basically like very, she wasn't yeah. heard of. She kind of disappeared. Like she became very disconnected from the Jewish community, but she never, she still okay. um, observed Jewish practice and it was known in her community that she was a Jew. Um, okay. Is Semitov upset that he wasn't the last Jew? Because I think he really liked that title. I think he did. I by the way, her name did. is, her, yeah. Um, her name is Tova, by the way. Tova. That's her so. first name. Yeah. Um, yeah. That's a very pretty name, by the way. Um, I just, I, I thought this is, has more to do with sexism. I didn't, but you're saying it has to do with her being in hiding or something like that, right? Because I thought, no. like, how characteristic, hey, I thought how characteristic of, you know, Judaism and religion as a whole to consider the last Jew to be a man because, I mean, obviously, like, this, this other person is a woman. So, <laughs> I mean, you can't count her, obviously. <laughs> But I thought it was a, that that was a situation. But yeah, but what? what yeah, what um, it 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 seemed the, my reading and understanding of it is that she was just so separated from everyone yeah. else that it seemed like they kind of forgot about her until recently. But there was a huge effort to get her and her family out of the country. Like it sounds very exciting. Like the Israeli government was involved. There were billionaires involved helping to finance the whole thing. Like it took weeks and months to execute. Like everything was undercover. Um, mm -hmm. Like it would make such a good movie. Um, but Simitov, if you guys want to learn more what? about um, this yeah, guy. Actually, and yeah, Ayan is asking what happened to that guy who was a headache to Taliban. So Simitov, yeah. the guy that we thought that was the last Jew, he was arrested not for by the Taliban, not for being a Jew or anything, but because he was fighting another Jew over a synagogue in Afghanistan. And they were both put to jail in by the Taliban. And they started, they continued their fight in jail so much so that the Taliban was so annoyed with them fighting all the time that the Taliban had to let them both go because they couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so we it's one of the funniest things I've ever heard. <laughs> We covered this before. You guys should go. You, should, yeah, yeah, you yeah. guys should go. If you guys want to learn the full story about this guy and why it's so hilarious, um, go look for our video called "The Last um, Jew in Afghanistan Refuses to Give His Wife a Divorce" or something like that, because that was another angle to the story. So, um, 
uh, Zembulon Simatov, like, like I said, he was famous and he would give interviews often as the last Jew in Afghanistan. And he was the last person who was the warden custodian taking care of the synagogue in Kabul, I believe. Eventually. And he said that he was not going to leave. Um, he was very for a minute. He lived under Taliban rule before, and somehow he was convinced that finally he was forced to flee. Now, when I was reading it originally, this flavor didn't pick up. But when I was reading it now, um, it previously was characterized as like he's just stubborn or he loves his country so much he doesn't want to leave. And then other um, newspapers are reporting more recently that he didn't want to leave because of an, the issue surrounding his divorce. <laughs> so his wife and children fled to Israel in the 1990s, and he's refused to divorce his wife ever since. And um, it, it kind of seemed like they helped him escape with the expectation that he would finally divorce his wife. Um, in uh, Jewish law, it's called a get. Um, he has to grant her a divorce or she becomes an agunat, which means a chained woman, but she's chained to him through the semblance of their religious marriage because he refuses to grant her this. And that's actually observed in Israel. So he's um and afghanistan they they recognize like your jewish practice the taliban accepts your jewish practices as a demi so which is is not yeah go on yeah um so i was reading reports recently that after he escaped the country you know they also had a very exciting way that they evacuated him from there um <clears throat> they showed photos of him um, in the presence of two rabbis via Zoom, um, granting the divorce and signing papers. Wow. And the whole issue of, oh, you don't technically have a rabbi present because it's virtual, like, theoretically may cause an issue of it being deemed valid in Israel. But there are other precedents where they're like, no, they should, they'll likely just grant the divorce. So, so basically, are, you're telling me that they, the negotiation was like, we will help you escape Afghanistan if you let your wife free? Was that what, basically what's happening? Something like that? That might just be my <laughs> characterization of it, but that's kind of what it sounded like. like that sounded like. Maybe, this whole thing I'm should be a movie. maybe I'm misrepresenting it because the way that, I think it was the Times of Israel was talking about it. They were saying like, he was hesitant to leave the country because he had this divorce situation hanging over his head or something. Um, right. And so to help that, they're like, okay, we'll help you with your divorce, something like that. But the divorce was in some way involved as in his yeah. escape. Wait, where is he now? Is he, where did he go? You go to Israel? I think he's in Israel. Tova hmm. right now, Tova gonna... in, she's right now in Albania in a temporary oh. settlement for um afghan refugees take her to israel as well Tova i think should, they're going to. Go to okay good i think or they should be celebrating she's either going to <laughs> israel or maybe I, canada i think I can't they should go exactly. i think people should interview them i want them to write their books or whatever yes i think this should be a move they should turn into a movie um also what's going to happen to the synagogue now because the whole discussion over who's going to take care of the because at at some point there was only two jewish men left in um in afghanistan and they were fighting over who gets the synagogue now that they have all left and as far as we know unless there's a secret jew in afghanistan but guys we just hey youtube this is not about a conspiracy they were literally talking about okay never mind um <laughs> uh oh <laughs> hit, we're talking about hidden not secret hidden pe people who are jewish and in hiding in afghanistan there's no more we could officially say that there's zero jewish people in afghanistan zero jewish people in afghanistan ever since tova have left so what's going to happen to synagogue who's going to take care of the synagogue i don't know hmm. the bad thing and was when simitov and the other so before um simitov was supposedly the last year in afghanistan he was competing with this other guy who was older than him over being like the last two Jews in Afghanistan, supposedly. <laughs> and they would fight yeah. with each other. And like I said, if you want to know the full story about their adventures with the Taliban, which is crazy, yeah. but the sad thing was because of their, their fallout with each other and then the Taliban getting involved,
this ancient Torah that was in their possession at the synagogue disappeared and it's never been found since because it was seized. You know, it's, it's, it's amazing that you, you see yourself as the last two Jewish people in a country and instead of working with each other, you're fighting with each other. <laughs> I mean, come on. There's no more other Jewish people left, and you're still fighting with each other. Like this is like this is an opportunity to, anyways. Um, I also think like I also think Taliban is uh, is upset. I would guess Taliban is upset about these Jewish people leaving. I would think that Taliban wants to show like a lot of people might think like, oh, they're gonna just ruin the synagogue because it's not Islamic. No, because the, you know the Buddha statue that they blew up, that is like not Ahlul Kitab. That's like literally an idol, right? That is something that if you want to be truly Islamic, you're supposed to blow up, right? A synagogue, Islamically, you technically have to protect. Like when it comes to um, the rules for Jewish and Christians, what they can't do is that they can't build churches or synagogues that are higher than a mosque. And then you can't build new mosques or churches. You could only maintain the churches and mosques that you have. And any constructions you do could only go towards maintenance and not towards expansion. And you can't advertise Christianity and Judaism. You're not allowed to do that. But other than those, technically, Islamic, ru Islamic uh, rulers are supposed to protect the Christians and the Jews and their churches and the synagogue. And no, and, oh, and you can't have any crosses or anything that on any churches as well, right? Um, so I think like Taliban would have loved to have the opportunity to show that, oh, yeah, we have Jewish people here, like just like the Islamic Republic of Iran that wants to be anti Semitic, but at the same time have Jewish people that well, uh, that they, that claims to be treating well. Like, I, I do think Taliban would have loved to be able to use a small Jewish community in Afghanistan as a PR stunt to be like, look, Jewish people are loving here. This is the true face of Islam or something like that. I think, that, yeah, but go on, Suzanne. So I, I totally agree with what you're saying. Like, um, mm. I think there's a possibility that, and this is pure, pure speculation, that maybe it was not the Taliban that was the primary motivating factor behind his escape. For example, with the Taliban, we have seen that they have been failing to protect the Shia minority. Uh, oh, yeah, Shia, they, Shia, Shia, they hate. They, well, they, 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 but they, but they still, they have said that they are going to protect like these people, and they've been get, failing to do so against ISIK, I, ISIS K. Right. So maybe the threat was more ISIS K than it was the Taliban. No, but ISIS K would would be more anti Shia than Jewish, anyways. Like ISIS K would not have been that motivated to go after two Jewish people because even ISIS K thinks that you know Jewish people should be able to live as demis under an Islamic caliphate. But Jewish, but ISIS K thinks like Shias are the worst, way worse than you know. They think Jewish people and Christian people should be protected under and as a demi under a Islamic caliphate, but not the Shias. Shias are the people that they consider to be destroying Islam from within. They're more. They're more. They see them as a greater threat than anything um, non-Islamic, right? So yeah, I would be. I, I would be more afraid of ISIS K as a Shia than I would be as a Jew. Um, one that's one thing and the second thing taliban itself has always been anti-shia until recently only because now they have to become mm -hmm. internationally recognized they're like oh yeah we're going to protect the shias and guess what some of their own members are like we're going to do what now <laughs> like like the, the the whole idea of some of the Taliban, especially the Kandahari Talibanis, mm -hmm. are coming out and saying we're going to abide by international laws. And oh yeah, we love the Shias. We're going to protect them. Their own like their own their own Taliban members are like, hey, I didn't think that I didn't sign up for protecting Shias. Like this is not what I thought we we're going to be doing once we get power. I thought we we're going to be eliminating Shias. Like this is why some the ISIS K people are finding it easier a bit to recruit people from Taliban 
because a lot of people from Taliban are finding the, are considering the Taliban to become now heretics. They consider them to be infidels for, mm -hmm. especially for negotiating with the United States and because protecting Shias. Like if, if the Taliban was protecting Jewish people, I don't think a lot of Taliban members would have an issue with that. But the fact that they're now closing up with Shias, that is a red line for a lot of them that they cannot accept. Anyways, anything you want to add or highlight in the live chat? Um, no, I think that's everything I wanted to say about this story. Um, except that I really hope uh, Simatov gets a movie made about him because he just seems like such a character. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Again, Simatov, his story should become the movie and the movie's title should be The Last Jew in Afghanistan. Like, how could that not be the title of the movie? The Last Jew in Afghanistan. And it should and be about And the plot Simitov. twist is at the end. His title gets taken away from him. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. We should highlight her. What's her name again? I forgot. Ta Tova, Tova Moradi. Tova Moradi. Like, it should be the, the, yeah, the, like, you're not even the last. Uh, yeah. Anyways. Um, yeah. <laughs> the door bursts open and she's like, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, and actually, this is this is easy money for Hollywood because no, there's no special effects, there's no, you know, th there's not that much war. This is going to be a background to a war. What right? are you, you talking about? You like... lived under the Soviets. I know, but that could be the background scenery of a, it. It would be like a two minute war scene or like a 30 second war scene it's not going to be the highlight of the movie is not the war right so budget wise this should it's a very interesting story that should not be very expensive to make so it should the, the return on investment for this is, should be astronomical it should become a movie atheist republic needs your help we have been the target of many legal attacks by Hindu nationalists ever since our founder, Armin Ababi, blasphemed against Hindu deities. We have retained legal counsel to help us defend our access to our community in India. We have started a fundraiser that will help us afford to tackle many legal issues, including judicial harassment and censorship. Whatever you can contribute will go a long ways in helping us in this fight. Link in the description below.